Stability test is done! Did we pass? Wait a minute, what does any of this stuff even mean? Black clouds threaten the sky, and waves roll across your bow. Apprehension grows in your gut, and suddenly that stability booklet doesn't seem very reassuring anymore. You know, the one that specified safe operating limits? After all, just how precise is that stability booklet? What is the margin for error? What makes that book so smart? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. And as a naval architect, I worry far less about the stability booklet. I rely on the extreme precision and reliability that forms the foundation of any stability booklet. You see, it all starts with a stability test. And today, I want to dive into that. I want to explain what we achieve in a stability test, and most importantly, why you deserve one. So a bit of context. What is even the goal of a stability test? Well, let's first talk about application. Before going to sea, the master of the ship checked their stability booklet against their current loadout. Now, this may present as many different levels of complexity depending on the size of your ship. Anything from knowing this is a standard cargo loadout all the way up to using a detailed loading computer. But either way, you're taking all of these loads and adding it up against what you have available in the stability booklet. Now imagine that you're reviewing that loadout. You're checking each of the weight items on board. You're looking for errors. When examining those weights, you're naturally going to focus on the big items. They're going to have the most impact if there are any errors. And what is the largest weight item in any loadout? It's the light ship. The weight of the vessel itself, freshly minted from the shipyard. And the properties of the light ship can make or break a vessel stability. So now that we understand the importance, the question becomes, how do you determine the light ship? And we want both the weight and the center of gravity very accurately. Well, your first thought might be to track the weight of every item that goes on and off of the ship during construction. Good idea, but it just simply isn't practical. Imagine the flurry of activity in a shipyard with dozens of workers hopping on and off the vessel all the time, bringing their equipment on and off, welding all over the place. You just can't track it all. Instead, we wait until construction finishes and conduct a stability test. Using the data from the stability test, naval architects can calculate the light ship very accurately. The light ship becomes that most important weight item in any stability calculation which is why so much effort goes into accurately calculating it during the stability test. So for our results to have any value, we need the accuracy and discipline of a finely controlled, detailed scientific experiment. Well, that's a great idea, but ships are not the best place for scientific accuracy. So I've said accuracy and precision many times when talking about a stability test. But those are just generic words. How do we actually apply them? The challenge is that we're taking measurements over a very, very, very small range, and then extrapolating those measurements to a much larger impact. Here's an analogy. Imagine I allowed you to weigh a single pin, just one, and then I asked you to accurately calculate the weight of an entire crate full of pins. In theory, that sounds simple enough. Just multiply the weight of one pin by the number of pins in the crate. But anyone with practical sense is probably going to ask, what if the pins had slightly different weights? What if the number of pins is slightly off? All of these tiny, tiny little inaccuracies could mean a huge difference when you're extrapolating the measurement of a small thing to a large quantity. Stability tests face many of the same challenges. The theory behind a stability test requires us to measure heel angles as we intentionally apply a healing moment, which is what the diagram on your screen is showing. But the diagram on your screen is drawn out of proportion. We only heal the ship one to three degrees typically. Now the diagram on your screen is actually drawn to scale. 
Look at how tiny that angle is. It's barely visible. And with such small angles, accurate measurements become paramount. That challenge of accuracy is the driving force behind many of the procedures in a stability test. Okay, let's get a stability test done. Snap, it's done! Yeah, right. The next part to appreciate is that a stability test requires extensive planning over several weeks. This is a fairly extended process. Several other people might focus on what happens during the day of the test, but performance on test day really reflects the preparation in the weeks leading up to the test. So to really understand that test process, we need to include all that preparation. The full process for a stability test follows these general steps. Step one, hire a naval architect to perform the test. This is your scientific consultant and also your coordinator for much of the test. Step two, the naval architect creates a test procedure. They then send this procedure to your regulatory body for approval. I'm most familiar with the US Coast Guard, so I'm going to limit my discussion to USCG. Step three, you and the naval architect coordinate to obtain all the required resources for the test. This could include everything from tugs to fenders to line handlers to specialized measurement equipment. Step number four, prepare the ship for the stability test. I can promise you that if the ship is operational, it's not ready. Step number five, the naval architect arrives and performs what is called a deadweight survey. Number six, test day. The USCG inspector arrives and you complete the rest of the stability test. One thing I do want to emphasize here is you can't just pick any day of the week. You have to wait for a day with good weather. So yay, the test is done. You're immediately asking, did I pass? Don't know yet. Step number seven, the naval architect prepares formal test report where they take all of that data and turn it into actual results. Eight, they send that off to the USCG for approval and review. USCG says, yes, we agree with your analysis. Stamped correct, that is now the official lightweight for the ship. Step number nine, you now have a new lightweight for your ship, and USCG is going to say you have to use those new test results for a new stability analysis to prove that the ship is still stable. That last step, step number nine, often takes people by surprise. You see, a stability test only tells you the current state of the light ship. It only tells you weight and center of gravity. But you also need a stability analysis to determine if that state is good or bad for vessel safety. Sometimes you can get away without doing this, but I generally tell people in terms of budgeting and planning, you should bet that if you need a stability test, also expect a stability analysis directly following the test. Now, I just want to take a moment out of all of the education here to point out that all of this talk about stability tests, this is a service that DMS can provide for you and really deliver fast and easy results. We provide the full range of scientific and logistic support that includes coordinating resources and advising you on the easiest ways to achieve your stability test, along with conducting the test itself. But there is one catch that I do that's very unique. Remember how I said that at the end of the test day, you ask, did we pass or fail? And most people will say, I don't know. With DMS, I deliver preliminary results on the day of the test. I will actually be able to give you a preliminary answer on the day of the test. Did you pass or fail? Yes or no. And within a couple days after the test, you'll actually get the formal test report. So it's a much faster turnaround due to the computer automation. And all of that means an easier test experience for you. So give us a call and find out how we can make your project easier. Lightship, lightweight survey, deadweight survey, stability test, incline experiment. You know, we don't make things easy with the nomenclature. Each naval architect uses a slightly different variation on a similar set of words to describe the various steps in a stability test. So the best thing to do right now is clear up some vocabulary. Lightship is the weight and center of gravity of the vessel as you would find it freshly minted from the shipyard. Com fully constructed, but not yet including all of the additional things that you would throw on for operations. 
things like fuel and water in the tanks, um, food in the food lockers. So we're just talking about things that are bolted down and attached to the ship, plus or minus some complicated rules. Deadweight survey is walking through the ship and taking an audit of all the items that need to be added or removed or relocated to bring the vessel back to its lightship condition. You see, any vessel is not actually going to be in its lightship condition. Even freshly minted from the shipyard, there's still going to be construction equipment on it. So we take a deadweight survey to identify all the stuff that is not part of lightship. And then after the test, we use mathematics to mathematically remove all of that deadweight from the tested condition. A tank survey is taking tank soundings to find the exact volume of liquid in every single tank on the ship. Freeboard readings are where we are measuring the freeboard at several points along the vessel length to accurately, very accurately, determine the overall vessel draft, trim, and heel. We are doing this with our own measurements because we're trying to get so accurate that we are assuming the draft marks may be off by a few millimeters, which is too much of an error for us. The lightweight survey is now an overarching term for a whole test. It's a combination of a deadweight survey, tank survey, and freeboard reading to determine the weight, longitudinal center of gravity, and transverse center of gravity for a ship. The incline experiment is an additional test that we do, moving weights around and measuring heel. We do this to measure the location of the vertical center of gravity. And then a stability test can sometimes just be a generic term for any combination of these, but more specifically, it's actually the combination of a lightweight survey and an incline experiment to get the full set of all of the information you need for the light ship. There's another context that I need to provide to all of this. In the past, some naval architects were less than honest in reporting the results of stability tests. They adjusted the test results to make the vessel appear more stable than it actually was. But unfortunately, this resulted in the Coast Guard approving the vessels as safe for sea until the vessels ran into trouble. At least that was the story that my mentors told me when explaining the attitudes of our regulators. And that heritage and that history still influences modern stability tests. The modern stability test has become a combination of science and tax audit. At least in the USA, the US Coast Guard sends inspectors to monitor every official stability test. Their sole job is to monitor the stability test and ensure that everything written into the test report matches reality. That doesn't guarantee you approval. That just guarantees that reality is matching what's on paper. The naval architect is still responsible for creating a test that will end with a reliable report. Whew, that was a lot to cover. But to summarize it all up, first off, why do we even need stability tests? It's because of the light chip. It's a really big weight, and we need to make sure that we accurately record it. We need to know exactly what the light chip weight of the ship is. The key to that is our stability test. Now, that doesn't mean that stability test is just snap your fingers and get one. It's a pretty detailed process and there's a lot of adaptability that comes along the way because you're trying to turn a scientific experiment and force it into the practical reality of shipping. That's where your naval architect comes in. They have all of the abilities to, and scientific background to know what you can stretch and what you can't. DMS has extensive experience in this area especially. I would really leave you with the analogy that ordering a stability test is similar to building a custom house. It takes time, planning, and coordination. But stability tests also provide the same benefits as a house. A house protects you from the weather and keeps you safe at night. Stability tests are just as important. They form the foundation that goes into one of the major ship safety systems. When night blackens the sky and bad weather rocks your ship, you want that reliable foundation. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. You know, this is just too darn complicated. 
or at least that's what I think every owner would be saying about doing their own stability test. So hire DMS to make your next project easier. Check out the website to find out what services I can offer for stability test and follow on work in stability analysis. Are you ready to make your next stability project a breeze?